Hi everybody, this is Ms. Clemmy and welcome to the screencast on nervous system hierarchy. If we look at hierarchies, we're going to see a lot of different branches of the nervous system, but obviously the, the, the king on the top is going to be what you're looking at here. And this is the brain. Um, the brain makes up the primary part of the central nervous system. But don't forget, in the central nervous system, we also have our spinal cord. And so basically, all information from your body is going to go up the spinal cord, get processed in the brain, and a response is going to go back down the spinal cord into those specific nerves. Within the brain, we've got a lot of different things going on. We have the cerebrum with all of its different lobes, the frontal for reasoning and, and uh, thinking, the parietal for that sensory information, the occipital for vision, temporal for hearing. Um, then we have the limbic system within, which includes the thalamus, which receives all that incoming inflammation and sends it where it needs to go, including the hypothalamus, which regulates um, hormones, um, regulates appetite, fear, hunger. And finally, the brainstem with the medulla, oblongata, and the pons, those structures doing very much involuntary things, like controlling your heart and your breathing and your blood vessels and your organs, things like that. So that in incorporates all of those different aspects of the central nervous system. But that's just one part of the hierarchy. And so we're going to look at that hierarchy today and how it is all coordinated, how it's all organized to provide responses for your body. So let's begin. Now let's actually first take a look at this model over here. You can see the nervous system. Here's our brain and spinal cord in the grayish color, and that's going to be your central nervous system. But everything else in yellow are nerves in a different part of your nervous system. So let's begin by thinking about this. Let's begin by saying that you got punched in the arm. Okay? In that arm, you have sense receptors. And so everything in the nervous system has to start with that sensation. There's some sort of receptor that detects changes, whether that's from your external environment in this case, or maybe things in your internal environment. And so we have those receptors in our skin. Those receptors also include the special senses to take in information and it includes your internal organs. For example, it can, could include um, your stomach. Your stomach has to have receptors in it to stress receptors so that when it gets to a certain point, it can send a signal to your brain to notify that it's full. Now, if we keep moving up in the, hip, in the nervous system, all of those things that we just had blown up in this box make up the sensory division of the peripheral nervous system. I tend to think of the sensory information or the sensory division as all the incoming info. And where is it going into? What? Where is it incoming to? Well, it's incoming to the central nervous system, which, like we mentioned earlier, includes your brain and includes your spinal cord. Now, the spinal cord doesn't have a major role in the fact that it doesn't really do much processing of information. It basically more brings all that information up to the brain. So the brain is going to process that information. What did I just receive? And it's going to mix it with other information it received that's related. For example, if you did get punched in the arm, chances are you probably saw something as well. Okay. And then it's going to figure out a response and distribute it accordingly. Now we have to work our way back down the nervous system to put into action those responses. So we're going to go back to the peripheral nervous system, but now we're in the motor division of the PNS. And I tend to think of this as all the outgoing information. And now here's where things get a little bit tricky. We have lots of different subdivisions. We have the somatic and the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is all automatic things. 
So this would be involuntary actions. The somatic would be all voluntary actions. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let me click forward here. This is a lot of information. So basically, that somatic nervous system is going to just control skeletal muscle. The autonomic, again, we have further subdivisions. We have the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. The sympathetic is more so a nervous system that's going to speed up those involuntary actions, and it's also known as fight or flight. The parasympathetic is like the brake. It's going to slow down involuntary actions. So sometimes this is referred to as the rest and digest nervous system. But wherever that response is headed, from the brain down here, whether it's going to your bicep, whether it's going to the blood vessels in the area to stop the, the internal bleeding, the bruising, those things are called effectors. This might be cut off a little bit here on the screen. Effectors are anything that the brain sends a message to and they put it into action. They're the ones that take that info and actually do it. Do what the brain tells it to do. Because the brain can't do it all, so it tells these different parts of the body, hey, do this, do that. Those are effectors. Now let's break down these two nervous systems in a little more detail. Okay, so we're in the autonomic nervous system. This is division of the peripheral nervous system, the motor division. We have sympathetic, parasympathetic, rest, oops, sorry about that, fight or flight. And so this is when you have all this adrenaline and um, you're in a very high stress situation. So your heartbeat is going to increase. Your breathing is going to increase. And both of those things are going to deliver more oxygen to your muscles. So say you have to escape from a predator or um, you're getting ready for a big sports activity, okay? You're also going to cut off any um, energy that's devoted to digestion. You don't have to worry about digesting at this point. You have to put all of your energy into those skeletal muscles and into your blood. The parasympathetic does all the opposite. It says, you know what, you can relax. Let's slow down your heart. You don't have to pump blood so much. You don't have to breathe so much because you don't have to get all that oxygen to your muscles. There's no threat. And you know what? We can actually use energy to digest that food. So let's, let's get digestion working good. Okay? So rest and digest versus fight or flight. They both control involuntary actions. Now we're almost finished. Let's put all this together. So say you cut your finger and your pain receptors are going to sense that. But ultimately what we want to do is we want to stop the bleeding. So our pain receptors are part of the sensory division of the peripheral nervous system. And so this is the incoming information. And that incoming information is going to get merged and filtered up to the spinal cord. Notice we're now in the central nervous system. And it's going to go to the thalamus, where the thalamus is going to sort that information and determine where in the brain it should send it. And so we're dealing with sensory information from the outside environment. We're going to send it to the parietal lobe of the cerebrum. And the parietal lobe is going to figure out an action response. Well, what do we need that the, the uh, finger to do to go back to homeostasis. And so the parietal lobe is going to say, oh, I know just the solution. So it's going to send that message back down the spinal cord, and it's going to go through the motor division. Remember, that's the outgoing information. And because we're dealing with involuntary actions, it's going to the autonomic nervous system. And then it's going to hopefully constrict really, really tightly those blood vessels in the sympathetic nervous system so it constricts and stops blood flow. Okay? So that's a look at uh, how you incorporate these different levels of organization.
Now say, for example, you were walking and you saw this, okay? What would be the sensory information, the sensory receptors of the peripheral nervous system? What would be the effectors? What would be the response that would be needed? Well, I hope that your sensory information would be coming from your eyes, maybe your ears, not your skin at that point. It's not being attacked. You're not being attacked yet, I hope. And the response, well, the response is going to depend on what you do. If you're going to run away, it's going to be your skeletal muscles. But it's also going to be the sympathetic division of the nervous system. Your, your eyes are going to get wider so you can see better. Your heart and breathing are going to increase. You're going to want to get away from that there. So you're going to have adrenaline pumping in. Okay? So that's another look at how that organization can come into play. And that's all I have, so I hope you found that helpful.